in today's rambly episode. A 16-year-old girl and a 31-year-old Russian. A very trigger-happy Russian. What could possibly go wrong? Let's get into it. Hi and welcome to another video here on my channel Morbid History. I'm Pilvi and once a week I upload a video about creepy folklore, mythology or a historic true crime case. Today we're going to talk about a very sad case that happened here in Sweden in 1915. So yeah, let's get straight on into it. We start this case in Stockholm in 1913. A very pretty young girl, only 14, enters an instrument shop with her mother or foster mother, Lisen. This uh, young girl called Greta Almqvist was very into uh, music. While Greta and her mother strolled about the little store, a Russian man, 31-year-old Ivan Volkov, walked in. Ivan was a bit of a celebrity during these days. He was a musician. He also came from a very good family, had a very good education and knew many languages. He was a bit of a man of the world, so to say, and right now he was touring Stockholm, was making quite a splash. So this is where our two main characters meet. On one hand Greta Almqvist and on the other Ivan Volkov. Greta was actually living with her very wealthy foster parents. Greta's own mother had died when she was very young and, and she was given to her mother's sister Lisen who was married to Johan Almqvist, who was a very well-respected professor and author. They lived a very, very good life. You can't say anything about that. They were upper crust of Stockholm society. They lived in a very fancy flat in the best parts of Stockholm. Greta was also seen as a very I hate to say it, well-developed young lady. She was soon to turn 15. She was spirited, outgoing, a bit naive. She had her foster parents. They didn't have any children of their own, so they really gave her everything she wanted. And the foster parents, Johan and Lisen, were also known to be very free-spirited. They were very into naturism and um, well either way Greta had a very fun and enjoyable childhood and grew up into a very charismatic teenager. She was seen as super pretty and had a very young very young Many young boys vying for her attention, and she had many friends. Just a very happy-go-lucky little lady. When Ivan saw her, Ivan himself had a little mustache. He was dark and handsome, I guess you could say, during these days. And he had also, like, a big charismatic cloud around him um, that I don't really think uh, comes out in pictures but who knows he must have had something that just said wow, wow! to uh, many people either way in this instrument shop 
uh, Volkov went up to uh, Lisen and Greta and struck up a conversation about instruments because uh, he's a musician and all that. And uh, soon Greta decided that she wanted to buy a dragspel instead an accordion, you know, the one when you do that and there's lots of music, yeah. She wanted one of those. Uh, it was heavy and uh, even the, the gentleman he was like, I'm, I can help you carry it home, it's too heavy for you ladies. And so he did that. He took it and carried it all the way to their paradvodning or fancy apartment and that would have been the end of it really problem was that Greta's foster mom was enthralled with this charismatic worldly musician man and decided that she wanted to invite him over as a guest and uh, Volkov Ivan Volkov became a regular at their little palace in town, I guess. They had uh, lots of evenings of fun and music and it became clearer and clearer that Ivan was focusing his attentions on the young Greta. You could say he became quite obsessed with the tiny, pretty, blonde teenager. Remember this is still a 31 year old. <laughs> History was a good time for creeps. And what happened next, I guess, happened quite quickly. Ivan had a bit of a tour in Norway, so he went to Oslo. He couldn't forget his beautiful pretty little Greta over there in Stockholm. So he sent her an envelope with a pair of rings, asking her to get engaged with him. Greta, for some reason, I guess we could say just, she's hicking 15 now. She's 15 by this point. He's a 31 year old man with some kind of charisma and she's whole of oh my god he's so mature and he knows so many things and my family loves him and he loves me and he's obsessed so of course I'm gonna marry him. She says yes and she sends uh, a letter back to him that I'm gonna read now in Swedish with a translation here. Min lilla älskling Ivan, tack för kort och brev. Sök ett engagemang i Stockholm, jag väntar dig då, det vore roligt. Min ring är vacker, den sitter på min hand. Hoppas du bär din ring. Sov gott om nätterna, spatsera inte med andra flickor. Många hjärtliga hälsningar från mamma och din Greta. This letter sent Ivan into a frenzy and he just left the tour and came straight back to Stockholm because now his only interest in life was Greta. Not a good sign, not a good sign at all. Um, listen when she heard about this engagement wasn't even faced like they were very free-spirited so she had nothing against big age gaps dad Johan Almquist wasn't uh, very thrilled about it though he thought that uh, Greta was way too young Duh. and but he also came around after a while Johan Almquist was uh, still banking on it all just fading away with time though because uh, Greta was supposed to go to Germany for school for a few years and uh, Ivan was going on a big tour in London 
so they will, would not be able to see each other for quite a while. But then, war hit. Ivan and Greta were both stuck in Sweden. Another very big part of uh, the happy, go lucky, dreamy world that uh, Greta grew up in was that every summer they went to their big mansion in Öland. There she would frolic about with friends her own age and they would uh, do nude baths and dance and flirt and just have fun together. It was like an idyllic place that Johan and Lisen had built up for them. They went there to find relaxation and happiness every summer. This year, of course, Ivan Volkov decided to tag along. It's also here during the summer when Ivan starts to get very, very controlling, jealous, and started drinking more openly. He did not like that Greta was out hanging around with her friends her own age, and he, in his paranoia and drunkenness, thought that she would be having an affair with any of them at any point. Greta was not having that, so she would sneak away and hang around with her friends anyway. God damn it, she's a teenager. She's a teenager. Volkov. Volkov. This was not the, the kind of wife Volkov wanted to have. Presumably, where he came from and grew up, this was the usual practice. The female was virginal, listened to her husband and obedient and just... He blamed it all on culture differences. But as time went on, of course, Greta started to get disillusioned with her sweet, sweet Ivan Volkov. <laughs> she saw him now as the drunk, angry, overbearing old man that he was. And hey, I'm over 30. He's younger than me, but yeah, he's old for her. She, she's, yeah, he's old, okay. And when they get back from Erland, the next year, just there's not much much info more than that Volkov actually moved into one of the rooms of their grand apartment and he kept up the nice facade uh, in front of uh, Greta's dad Johan Almqvist who had no idea of the man that he had shown both Lisa and Greta Remember now that Lisen, Greta's mother, she had seen all this too. And she chose not to tell her husband about it. Very strange. Greta still tried to, like, almost push him away. But Volkov was under the assumption that in his culture, if you got engaged it meant forever you could not break it he was gonna get her and set her straight by any means so yeah this just continued for almost another year until it was time again to go to Erland. this time even Lisen was a bit yeah maybe he should not come along but she had a soft spot for Volkov for some reason, and he said that he would help with gardening, cooking, and he got to tag along this time too. The summer of 1915. But this summer, we can guarantee that Greta was in 
entirely, entirely disillusioned with the man she once fell in love with. And she had actually fell in love with a boy her own age who was still back in Stockholm, a medicine student. Volkov, Ivan Volkov, finds letters written between Greta and this young boy. In one of the letters, the young boy writes to Greta, Min älskade tusen kyssar, Gud bevara oss för Volkov, hoppas vi ska slippa den rysliga människan. And Greta responds with, Han liknar verkligen fan själv, och så skamlig. Han går med kikare och tittar på oss när vi badar. Det värsta är att han bär revolver med sig jämt, och vi kan inte ta den ifrån honom. We can say that this is the catalyst of his psycho behavior. He starts shooting, okay, first he starts drinking himself into oblivion, shooting his pistol everywhere, through doors, through roofs, through everything. And for some reason, Lisa still does not tell her husband about this. What kind of soft spot do you have for this insane man? Lisa, I need to know. I don't care how well he plays his instruments or how fancy his mustachioed face is. He's shooting everywhere and he's just being a drunk maniac. Either way. He goes into a spiral of enormous proportions. And then comes the week of the incident. The entire Thursday, 8th of July 1915, she keeps herself far away from Ivan. Ivan gets paranoid. He confronts Lisa and says that she has to con like make a giant giant colleague just blah, blah, blah. she has to check Greta's virginity, like actually go in there and see that she hasn't been unfaithful. Lisa, of course, says, no, I'm not gonna do that. But he's just spiraling out of anxiety and destruct destructive behavior by this point. And then we come to the ninth of July 1915. Lisa and Greta walk over to a friend's house, not far away from their little manor house. Uh, they're there to pick up some coffee beans, I think. And on their way back, they meet up with a very, very angry and drunk Ivan. He is waving his pistol around and screaming, once again telling Lisa that she has to do the, the checkup on Greta, which Lisa again sternly says no to. Good on you, Lisa, you're doing something good. Ivan shoots at the ground in front of Lisa. This prompts Greta to make a little nervous laugh, understandable, but Ivan takes this as mockery and shoots Greta four times, then and there. The first shot goes through here, the other one here, the third through her chest, and one in the hip. And of course, she gets cancelled on the spot. He also goes ahead and beats Lisa until she's unconscious. Then he takes the body of Greta and drags her a bit into like um, 
a little forested greenery area right next to the road where he kisses her bloody face and cries a bit. He then takes his pistol and tries to shoot himself, but it's out of bullets. Sad. So, at this point, he just decides to escape. Öland is an island that's pretty close to the mainland of Sweden. So he can actually row over to a place called Småland. Småland again, where I'm from. Yay. Um, and he takes, he finds a little boat and he rows over to um, Småland. And uh, yeah, at some point Lisen wakes up and people find Greta's dead body and a hunt ensues, of course. But like said, uh, Ivan manages to escape and uh, finds some house he sleeps over in, gets some food. But at some point he gets this passionate bang that he has to return to Erland just to see her one last time and mayhaps even shoot himself there. Anyway. So he takes his boat and goes back to Erland, peers into the window to the cellar where he sees Greta's body lying on a big wooden table down in the cellar. This was the usual way to keep the bodies cold and preserved until burial. He somehow sneaks in there and sits there for hours just staring at her. We know this because he left a note um, that I'm gonna read now to in Swedish. Here we are. <sighs> Greta, varför lärde jag känna dig? Och varför älskade jag dig? Jag kände att hela komedin skulle sluta med ett drama. Två år har jag älskat dig. Tillräckligt och lidigt. Sex dagar är det sedan jag är i skogen utan dig. Men jag kommer tillbaka och dör på samma plats. Dyra Greta, förlåt. Ivan. And with this, we could assume that he wanted to go back to the place where he shot Greta and do the same to himself. But after leaving the note, he had another change of heart and went back to his little boat and went back to Småland. This time though, the police were after him. And after a few days, they found him in a ditch. He tried to run away, but was shot in his leg, was taken and yeah. A court thing a magic could begin. In the courtroom we had Lisen and Johan crying, mostly Lisen out of shame. How could she have trusted this creep? People were even speculating that she had done so because she herself had a love affair with Ivan. There's no conclusive uh, evidence as to if that's true or not. In December of that year, he got his verdict. Ten years in prison. Ten years for cold-blooded murder of a young teenage girl with her entire life ahead of her. And yeah, all we know after that is that he moved to Norway, where he continued playing his instruments and got back to his musical career. Some say that he moved back to Russia, but I don't really care. I hope he had a terrible time. So, yeah, that was today's little true crime case for you. What do you think? Like, everyone should have just seen what a madman he was and not be blinded by his uh, charm. 
It's a very sad story and rest in peace Greta Almqvist. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it really helps with the algorithm and I love it when you comment because feedback is amazing. I spend a lot of time making these videos and yeah. And now thanks to all my beautiful patrons. I hope you enjoy all the extra content I post over there. Stay hydrated, stay happy and take care of yourself. Bye bye!